while. Um, it's uh, I'm humbled really by the um, by the selection and looking forward to doing a lot of good things. And I, I'm glad to be on to to give you a little report of what we're doing so far. I really had to um, check if that was a typo because you you know being a Republican and all that, I was just really shocked that you actually. I mean, I'm happy because we're cool, but. <laughs> I, what was that like just behind the scenes? How did you uh, make the move? Who nominated you? What, where'd you get the votes? And if you could, Mayor. Well, you know, I, I don't know if it was, I don't think it's, it was about party. Right. It, it really was about trying to build the council, uh, build a stronger council, build a more cohesive council. And, um, and that's kind of what I, I campaigned on uh, <laughs> to, to certain mayors. And, uh, and we did it, you know. So, um, like I said, it, it, really, it really wasn't about politics or it wasn't about party. Right. Uh, everything's about politics, but it wasn't about party. <laughs> <laughs> and in the end, it's about the people, right? And we, we all say that. And I think that's the, that's the goal now is really just about the people and, and getting things done. So, like I said, I'm glad to be here to report some of that. At right. least uh, two big items that we're, we're working on right now. Okay, and the two big ones I know that you wanted to talk about abandoned vehicles and stray dogs. Are those the two big ones? Oh, yeah, those are the two big ones. Okay. Uh, I do want to, um, you know, we've, we've had the Stray Animal Roundup Committee for I don't know how many years. I mean, I've been, I've been involved with the council for gosh, since the 90s, right. and I've heard about it since then, and we've really never had, um, you know, it hasn't been consistent in as far as its 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 duties and its responsibilities and its outcomes. Um, and so they, I can't say that they've never done anything because they've, they've done roundups uh, around the island, um, but that's kind of a temporary fix, and that's kind of what we're doing right now. Um, and so I'm really happy that uh, Mayor Paco accepted to to lead this committee. Uh, it's it's <laughs> it is a daunting task, and it's not what everybody wants to do, but it's what everybody hears. And so uh, I feel like you know we he say there's a new Rudy in town because the former <laughs> Rudy was was the chairperson, and so they they don't have the same uh, personalities. But uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to say too much about that. Other than this Rudy, I know is is definitely gonna work uh, if not as hard harder than than the previous and i'm looking forward to, to more results let's get mayor um, rudy if, that. if we could mayor jesse exactly. i want to get mayor rudy on here i don't know if he knew what he was getting into <laughs> <laughs> well yeah let's ask mayor rudy <laughs> yeah did, did you hear the question right mayor when they're like who wants to head up the stray dog thing on you, on you. Oh no, he didn't he didn't ask I, he didn't uh he didn't offer um, <laughs> he was volunteered yeah. So what he did was, uh, you know, he's part of the committee, and so there's certain mayors and vice mayors that are already part of the committee, and he, you know, I told them that I I would appreciate a response by the next regular meeting, and he raised his hand and he and he he, he already proposed a meeting date, so I'm like, oh, there's the chairperson. Oh wow, <laughs> yeah. So that's how that happened. Well, congratulations, uh, Mayor Rudy. It, it sounds like you definitely have your work cut out for you in the uh, rounding up of a stray animal. So let's uh, hear uh, what's the first step. Good morning, Chris. Hello. Morning, morning, Mayor Rudy. Good morning. Um, yes, what, what we did was we formed a committee. Um, I guess I'm the chairperson. And we have Mayor, we have Mayor McDonald. Um, Mayor Del Alvarez, and uh, we also had other mayors who volunteered, like the uh, vice mayor of Derido, uh, Gigo, um, and I forgot to mention, Jess Bautista is part of the committee. So a bunch of us decided to hold a meeting with GAIN as well as uh, agriculture. Um, we went to a field trip last week to GAIN. They, they were requesting for their kennels to be repaired. So what we did was we rounded up all the mayor staff around the 19 villages. We went up to gain, we cut their grass and we also repaired their kennels so we can accommodate more dogs. Right, uh, so we had gain on uh, last week to kind of talk about that, uh, Mayor Rudy. So when is the actual rounding up of the stray dogs going to start? And is there anything you guys need to do to get into place before it does? Okay, my, my, my plan of attack was to work on certain villages at a time. Um, if each mayor would drop a trap to a certain village, we were supposed to actually uh, start with Santa Rita 
but uh, we were assuming that when we repair the kennels, we can start the uh, roundup, but uh, according to GAIN, they need to sterilize the, the kennels. So um, we have to put that on hold right now, but I am gonna request another meeting with the agriculture as well as GAIN because we have some malfunction communications and uh, I want to straighten everything out before we start doing our roundup. You know, Chris, uh, I cannot guarantee that this is going to be 100%, but the main thing is that we are going to try our very best. Right. Well, we're at 0% now, so even if we don't get 100%, anything would be an improvement. Uh, Mayor Jesse, Mayor Rudy. Yeah, you know. So, so you, you know, Chris, and, and, and I really do applaud Mayor Rudy's efforts because, like I said, no one really wanted to take the, the bull by the horns here, and he, he did. And so I'm, I'm very, very thankful. And it, is, it does get frustrating. Uh, I know that he's running into some little kinks now. But, you know, what I, what I do want to share with everyone is that, you know, uh, everyone talks about the problem. Everyone talks about having no money. But what I have to say is that at least a few of us mayors put our own resources together to, to get the job done up at GAIN. And so we're, we're very pleased about that progress, at least getting the kennels taken care of and uh, secured for, for the, the, the animals that we catch. One of the things that we have to remember is that this is just the, this is the immediate solution for a long-term problem. Right. And so there's so many different um so many different ideas as to how this we can resolve the problem. But the good thing about what Mayor Paco and, and some of the other mayors and vice mayors are doing is that they're they're handling the immediate problem, which is the stray dogs, right? Um, there is, everyone has a different point of view on how to, to catch the dogs and how to trap them. Uh, but whatever we're, whatever way is gonna work, uh, we're just, we're gonna try it. And, and that's what, what I'm happy about now. Um, the longer term solution, um, I think majority, not all, I think majority uh, of the, the, the people in the field uh, agree that spay and neutering is, is probably going to work out the best. But of course that requires funding and that requires time. Right. And so uh, that's definitely on our plate, but uh, for the, as an immediate solution, uh, Mayor Rudy's committee uh, is definitely the, the way to go. You keep mentioning uh, kinks um, and you know problems with getting this up and running. What are some of those uh, roadblocks that you're coming across here at the beginning of this effort? Well, okay, this... Chris. Go ahead. Here, I got. It. Okay, Chris. You know, when we were able to um, repair the eight kennels, I was assuming that we can get the ball rolling and start this program by. Uh, eradicating all these stray animals in Santa Rita. But the kink that we ran across was that they need to sterilize the kennels. I was looking forward in starting today, well, which is Tuesday. I was looking forward to bring traps down to uh, Santa Rita and uh, start the program as soon as possible. Because, you know, I don't care if all we catch is 10 dogs, 11 dogs, or whatever we catch in Santa Rita, but at least that's 10 dogs off the street. It's the, the, the kings that we're running across right now is all about the communication. So I'm going to schedule a meeting with the agriculture as well as gain sometimes this week so we can get the ball rolling. When you come across these uh, kinks, is it is that why we've like mayor alex said uh we've had this committee and different versions of it since the 90s and nothing's ever gotten done how challenging is it going to be to get past all these communication problems to actually getting to the problem that we're trying to solve well agriculture and gain as well as the mayors we just have to listen to you know the same tune of music because right now there are kinks like what I said earlier about I didn't know that we have to sanitize the kennels that's one but if we all work as a, as a group I'm pretty sure that we can resolve this this issues and um, give me some time this week to schedule another meeting with agriculture as well as gain so that we can fix some of the kinks or or whatever speed bumps or Oh, yeah. That we are running across. 
Which village has the most stray dogs? To be honest with you, I can't answer you on that because uh, every village has the same problem. But then it all depends as well as the residents with this leash law. They they should either tie their dogs up and make sure they have a, a decent shelter with water at all times. Mayor Alec? I, that, that, that's definitely one of the, the things that we want to push with with this uh, with this committee and with our in our efforts to you know to round up the, the stray animals is really for residents to just abide by the law and one of the things that I know we've discussed in this committee is when we go out uh, we're going to be uh, we're going to have our citations with us and and it's not because we want to, to give them fines but everyone just needs to to follow the law especially when it comes to to the animals i mean if you're going to if you're going to keep a pet you need to keep it properly and um you know we all grew up with the dog i don't want to want to say it but we you know we we've all we've all grown up with grandma and grandpa and all the dogs right and and we know how that goes and it's not always you know that's not always the best way to go and it's not always the best way to keep a pet and so we we just need to keep we need to educate our community really on how to how to properly keep the pets because it's not okay to let your dog uh, run loose. It's it's okay if you you have a fenced in yard and you let the dog run around your yard, not a problem at all. But to let it run freely, it's that's just not it's just not the right thing to do. That's why um, they that's why he's the president, guys, because he's by the book. Mayor <laughs> well, is by well the you know, again, it's about it's it's just about the people. I mean, honestly, it really is. I mean, when you think when it, when we talk about when people refer to the first citation that I gave right. uh, a year ago, um, you know what? The whole that entire street was happy because that entire street was finally able to walk walk on that street and walk to the bus stop and and not fear for their child's life and and so on and so forth, right? And so it's it's not just about um, giving fines and issuing citations. It's, it's just, it's really about keeping everybody safe and the pets safe, right. for heaven's sake. Um, One of the things, though, Chris, you asked about the about the kinks is in the past, the, there were so many different people talking, different languages from the mayors to gain to agriculture. And really this, this entire ordeal, this entire task responsibility is really animal controls responsibility. It's really the Department of Agriculture, but we're not, we're not putting the blame on anyone. We're trying to work together. And so I think that's the difference now is that we're, we're trying to get all three of us to get together, work together and contribute together because one person can't fund it all. The mayors can't fund it. Agriculture can't fund it. Gain can't do it. But I think uh, we're, we're moving in the right direction. Definitely with, with this committee. How and prepared again, are, you, are you guys when you go out there, you know, that there's going to be those people that you try and round up the dog. Hey, no, that's mine. I feed that dog. Well, that's fluffy. No, that's sparkles. <laughs> yeah. No, and that's so Fido. We, we no. Yeah. At, at our first meeting, the, the first meeting that Mayor Paco called, um, uh, Chelsea mentioned, uh, talked about waivers and, you know, of course, Mayor Paco is, Mayor Paco is the Marine in this. <laughs> he doesn't really, he, he's not too, he doesn't care about being nice. <laughs> I'm sorry about that, Mayor Paco. You guys are a perfect you know, couple. Nice. <laughs> it's, it's not about being nice. It's about following the law. Yeah. And, and Mayor Paco says, well, you know, we don't need to warn them that we're coming. They need to know that they tie their dog or cage their dog properly because when we come, we're taking, we're taking the loose dog. We're taking the dog that is attacking someone and it is ours. It becomes the property or it becomes a responsibility of a ward of the state whoever is to take it in whether it's gain well it's going to be gain ultimately right and so gain does does what it needs to do to properly mm -hmm. handle the, the dog so yeah that's of course that's part of the discussion you know we're talking about how we how we get people to know we're coming so you tie up your dogs uh, you know secure them properly uh, but but we're going we're, we're having a little back and forth on that <laughs> How, right how that's going to work out. Uh, I have the board chair, of, a board education chair, uh, Ms. Marie Gutierrez, uh, in the Zoom room. So I wanted to touch base uh, really quick. Um, what don't we know about abandoned vehicle cleanup and what do people need to um, know about uh, okay, getting, you know, white goods or whatever else, tires and all well, that stuff? So we're going to, we're just, because because we have a larger sum of money this year and we're hoping to have that money throughout the year, um, we're going to start with collecting the abandoned vehicles and tires first. And we'll keep this, um, keep it working so that it, it's, uh, 
better for accountability. Uh, we want to be accountable for the money that we spend. We want to be accountable for uh, the, the items that we pick up and dispose. So we're going to, as soon as the POs are ready, which we're hoping by the end of the month, if not sooner, um, we, the mayors, each mayor will be charged with collecting in their own manner all the abandoned vehicles and the tires in their villages first. Uh, once that's done, we'll, we will uh, push out the other purchase orders for uh, appliances, electronics, and green waste. It's not to say that we they're not be able to collect uh, abandoned vehicles and tires, but because they're the larger items that need to get disposed, um, we're going to accept those first and hopefully get that out of the way. Uh, one of the things that's always been a problem is the, the the, um, the time that we receive the money. So the money is always there. People pay into it. So we have the money. It's it's when the money gets to us mayors. And so uh, one of the things that we're working on this year, we will be working on is making sure that we can get the money timely and that we can use the money year round so that we can uh, you know dispose year round as opposed to having to wait to the end of the year. Mayor Rudy, how many abandoned vehicles, tires, white goods, is there an MTM? Um, to be honest with you, Chris, I, I haven't done a head count, but we have actually removed quite a few vehicles from the last uh, funds that we had. But, you know, people are kind of upset of what I said about charging the $300 to the individuals that we have re removed the vehicle. At. And I'm going to call these guys frequent flyers. Take, for example, from Joe Doe's house, we remove two vehicles. And the next thing you know, he brings another three vehicles back into his yard. And then it's going to fall back to us and say, hey, can you remove these other three vehicles? It's like, excuse me, we already removed two vehicles. So those are what I'm trying to say. I understand the community, the, the people are paying um, for registration for removal of abandoned vehicles. But if I go to Joe Doe's house and I remove two vehicles and he brings another three vehicles back and he requests for us to remove mm. it. Then eventually, I think we should start charging Joe Doe the, the amount of $300 because it's $150 to remove the vehicle from your home and $150 to dispose the vehicle. So um, I don't know who Joe Doe is, but his ears are probably burning. And so what's happening here, Mayor Rudy? They put the cars out, then you guys take it, and they're like, hey, bring those three from the back. No, what it is, Chris, is we cleared up the yard, and then, you know, these guys bring in vehicles for parts. After they remove the parts, they're going to ask us again, the mayors, to, to remove the vehicles. Mm. You sound pretty frustrated. You know, I, I want I, I want to give the community a chance to have their vehicles removed. I cannot be going back to Joe Doe's house or whatever and be removing three more vehicles when the other individual needs their vehicles removed too as well. You know, I'm just trying to be fair to the committee. Right. Maybe we should do a per household limit, right? You know, and then... When I, when I approach a residence, I said, ma'am, would you like your vehicle to be removed? Oh, mayor, this is sentimental. Sentimental? They're just using the vehicle to secure their canopy. You know, I'm trying my best to keep the village of MTM clean. You know, it, it's hard work. You know, my boys and I, we do police call on Friday morning. By, by noon, there's trash on the road again. I'm still on that abandoned vehicle of sentimental value. Yes. You know, yeah. I, you know what your mom and I did in that back seat. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, Mayor Alec, anything else in, in closing? Sounds like these are the two big issues for you guys big to issue, tackle issue, in, issue, issue, in 2021. You know, it's, like I said, no one, it's, these aren't new issues. They're something that we've always been working on, but we're hoping to have uh, better, you know, we're, we're hoping to work on it better so that it, it serves everyone quicker and and more efficiently. So uh, I, I'm just hoping for more positive outcomes. There's certainly uh, other things down the down the line, and, and we'll, we'll certainly keep you posted. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Rudy. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Have a good day. All right. Likewise. Okay, we'll see you. All right. Uh, Mayor's Jesse Alec and Mayor um, Rudy Paco here. Uh, talking about abandoned vehicles and abandoned dogs. Uh.